it's amazing to me the number of people who will want to tell me of a miracle and their evidence for it is that they heard that. They heard that a chunk of flying saucer has been recovered in Uruguay. They heard that uh, there was a machine found impossible to construct by known human me. I say, well, where did you hear it? They say, well, uh, you know, uh, on Art Bell or something like that. This is not evidence of anything except the foolishness of human beings. Now, if you have such a machine, we'll talk. You know, that's how close in it has to be because we, we live in a world mad for weird news and there's money to be made. I mean, think of these people like Bud Hopkins and uh, Whitley Strieber and Kenneth Starr, for that matter. Uh, in, in, it is in none of these people's interest to come back to the rest of us and say, you know, I investigated that flying saucer or that blow job, and um, it appears not to have happened. It appears to be a bunch of malarkey. This sells no books. This builds no reputation. This advances no agenda. No, they say, well, you know, uh, it looks like this is the real thing and uh, it's going to make some real changes here. You have to have your craft detector in order. And if you are content with rumor, then there are enough rumors around that you need never leave your armchair. You can just enjoy the weirdness of the world and you don't have to take drugs and you don't have to go to Bali and you don't have to get your feet muddy in the rainforest. Be, but none of this is, can be trusted or is uh, worthwhile. Information mutates. It's perverse. People have strange unconscious agendas. So I, I will entertain anything given that there is evidence that will stand the test. But rumor doesn't do it. And the other thing is most people are incredibly decent and, ha and most people are incredibly naive about how weaselly some people can be. So, you know, here's uh, someone on the telly in blackened profile, their voice altered by electronic means, and they're saying, well, I was a NASA scientist and I was there when the alien body parts were brought into the freezer. I was under Colonel so-and-so. Well, don't you ask yourself, why, why the blackened screen? Why the electronically altered voice? They say, well, certain agencies of the U.S. government would uh, hunt me down if I were to tell this story. No, people, come on, come on. Uh, the government, if we can handle the president's blowjob, we can handle the knowledge that there are extraterrestrials interfering with American politics. This idea that we can't handle it, hell, there's nothing else where they spare our feelings. They're perfectly willing to hit you with the latest tax hike or a uh, preposterous piece of immigration legislation or racist malarkey or homophobic crapola. But somehow in this area of alien contact, we're thought to be so fragile we just can't handle the news. Uh, I, I don't bite. Uh, if somebody has real evidence, we'll take a look. But no blackened screens, no anonymity, no not for attribution, back channel briefings, please. That's all the sign of uh, a con job in progress. And then the other thing is, do never be impressed by credentials. Of course, maybe I say this because I have practically none. <laughs> but, you know, any weird story which begins like this. Former NASA scientist Harold Schmigley uh, said in Santa Fe today, when I hear the phrase former NASA scientist, I reach for my revolver. <laughs> if somebody leads with their credentials, they're conning you. If somebody says human being, 
David Schmigley reports so-and-so, then I say, well, that's interesting. What does David have to say? But if they immediately try to snow you, like NASA scientists are supposed to know something about this or have a better grip on reality than the rest of us, get real. You can't be serious. Uh, you know, any, any stage magician will tell you scientists are the grist for the mill, the easiest folks to lead around by the nose there are. That's why, well, no, I don't want to name names or get into uh, bashing of particular careers. I've skirted close enough to that already. My point being, the truth can defend itself. And if you really want to believe in the hall of records beneath the Sphinx, or the crop circles, or the Area 51 that our government is trading fetal tissue for high technology, well then hustle your buns down there and uh, drink in the bars and buy people drinks and, uh, and, and hear what's really going on. Because at the distances we all are from these phenomena, our instruments that inform us are incredibly uh, perverse and designed to mislead, befuddle, and bamboozle us. And, and that's w one of the things I love about the psychedelic experience is I've, I sound like one of these mad people. You know, the things I say about DMT are these dead souls, is this extraterrestrial intervention. But I have uh, a method. You can check me just go smoke DMT. Now granted, it's not as easy as ordering a double latte, but on the other hand, it's certainly a lot easier than confirming the existence of alien body parts in some government vault. If you think I'm full of crap, smoke DMT and then come tell me about how it didn't do anything and, or it was, I overrated it tremendously. In other words, we have an object that we can investigate, and weird as DMT is, we can investigate it by normal investigative methods, by giving it to people, by interviewing them, by building virtual realities and seeing if they confirm, yeah, that's what it looked like to me. In other words, strangeness is not in principle beyond investigation, but the method by which it should be investigated is no different than the methods we bring to bear on any other thing uh, which puzzles us. And people say, well, you're not doing honor to the terrible trauma that these victims of alien proctological examination have had to endure and so forth and so on. Well, listen, if you, if you witness a murder, you have to testify. You have, to, you have to tell your story in front of hostile attorneys, in front of a jury, in front of a judge. You don't get to say, oh, it was just so horrible, I, I just can't, I can't give testimony. Uh, no, we will compel your testimony if necessary. So the idea that people who bring extraordinary news to our campfire should not be grilled by extraordinary means seems to me uh, mush-headed, and that you will then end up with unconfirmed rumors, hysterias, so forth and so on. And then the other thing is there's money to be made from these things. Uh, you know, write a book claiming any damn thing, and you can get a following these days. It is not possible to think up a cosmology so absurd that you can't get at least 500 people to sell their houses and proclaim you the avatar and uh, join up. It really isn't. And so it's really a problem for those of us who really want to know the real stuff, the genuine article. And, the, and again, it, it's giving weird a bad name uh, because there is real weird. There are real things, DMT, Weirder than crop circles, weirder than alien intervention, weirder than Atlantis, weirder than the Hall of Records under the Sphinx, weirder than all of these fairy tales are truly real things. But you've got to go out there and kick the tire and hoot the horn, and you can't rely on, on anybody, you know?
you have to experience it uh, directly.